Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Elefanti again and welcome to Science Explained. Welcome to this channel. This is brand new, so I hope you will support me by clicking the subscribe button so I can support you better. This video is a guide for you on how to complete your thermal energy transfer lab. The purpose of this lab is to explore the process of thermal energy transfer and to examine how the amount and type of substance affect its ability to absorb thermal energy. These are the supplies that you need and of course you don't need to gather all the materials because this is a drag and drop virtual lab. Make sure to download the student guide from the message board. While it, it is doing that, so our independent variable here is the mass of the substance and a dependent variable is the amount of heat absorbed, controlling the type of substance and the initial pressure. For the second part, your variable is the independent variable type of substance, dependent variable is the amount of heat absorbed and controlling the mass and the initial temperature. So here you are going to measure the mass of the cup and you are going to zero it out by clicking the hair button and then you are going to get the desired amount of water which is 200 grams in this case and not including the mass of the cup if that makes sense and you are going to do the entire process the same process for all the of the cups with the different types of substances Make sure to answer the pre-lab questions before you perform the experiment while we are doing the setup. So you have to um, answer all these three questions in paragraph form and you do it here. So for table A, you are going to examine the effect of mass or the material type on the thermal energy transfer. So as you can see here, you have water, wet sand, and dry sand as your materials with specific amount of each material. So we have 200 grams and 100 grams. So what you see here are the initial temperatures of the substances and you are going to write those in this column. So for example, for water 200 grams, that would be 20.9 degrees Celsius. So we are using degrees Celsius here because it is an international measurement for temperature and we don't use Fahrenheit. And then just complete the rest. Since you've turned on the lamp and the samples are warming, continue on to measure the change in temperature for different materials and mass. So you just have to wait what happens after 25 minutes. So while waiting for 25 minutes, you're going to want to answer this question. Which samples will heat up faster? Is it the 100 grams, the least massive, the 200 grams, the most massive, or there's no difference? And then you are going to explain your reasoning. So that means this box right here will answer what is the effect of mass to the heat transfer. And then the bottom box will answer what is the effect of the type of substance to the heat transfer. And now we are going to turn off the lamp and we are going to stir the substances. In real life, when you do the lab, you are going to use different steering rods for different substances to avoid mixing of particles. And then we're going to want to get the final temperature. So for 200 grams of water, it will be 30.1 degrees Celsius. And to calculate the change in temperature, you just simply subtract the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So here it will be 30.1 minus 20.9. And that will give us 9.2. And you are going to do the same process for all of these masses. That is how you complete table A. In this part of the lab, you'll heat different types of metals to the same temperature in order to examine the effect of material type on thermal energy transfer and specific heat capacity. Make sure you follow the on-screen directions. Start by filling the beaker with 500 milliliters of tap water. So as per instruction, it says here that we need a 50 gram of aluminum wire, so we're going to cut um, extra here and we put 50 grams on this part. Make sure not to skip any of the instructions so you will get all the information that you need to complete table A. So you should be able to get the mass of the steel wire and the lead pellets 
and as well as the further instructions on how to coil these materials. In this step, you'll add room temperature water to the calorimeter and measure its mass. Make sure you follow the on-screen directions. Start by placing the calorimeter without its lid onto the mass balance. So here we are going to add an, ex an exact amount of water, therefore we are going to zero it out so we won't add the mass of the cup. Alright, when doing this tab, this will give us the initial temperature of the metal sample. It says here it is 100 degrees Celsius, so we're going to put here 100 degrees. So here we need to get the initial temperature of water, so we are going to do as directed. And here it will give us the initial temperature of water. Once so here this is 17 and the increment will be 2 because you say 17.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0 0.8 and then we have 18. So this will be 17.8. So obviously here the temperature of water is 100 degrees because it is a boiling point of water. In the same way, this will also be the initial temperature of our metal because it gets the temperature of the water. So you're going to want to write here 100 degrees. Here you are going to transfer the aluminum metal using a tong and the colorimeter cup and you should be able to measure the equilibrium temperature of the water and the metal. So when you place the metal in the water, of course the temperature will change and this is now the equilibrium temperature which is reached when the water temperature stops increasing. So you're going to want to write here 20.4. So for the next steps, you are going to complete the same process for the steel wire and the lead pellets. So for this column, you are going to follow this equation which says the equilibrium temperature minus the initial temperature of water and, and our equilibrium temperature is 20.4 and the initial temperature of water is 17.8 for this specific metal, which would give us 2.6. Now we are going to calculate for the change of temperature of the metal. So to do that, we have the temperature in equilibrium minus the initial temperature of the metal. So our equilibrium, we know that it is 20.4 and then the change of, I mean the initial temperature of the metal was 100. So minus 100. So here you will be expecting that you will have a negative answer because a small number minus a negative uh, big number. However, here, since you put the metal inside the cup, which is a thermally insulated environment, so therefore there is no loser gain of energy. Therefore, we are just going to use an absolute value here. And doing the math, we it will give us 79.6 positive. And then here, this specific heat of water is 4.18, which is already constant, and it will be the same for all. And we are going to calculate for the specific heat of the aluminum wire. And to solve that, we have this equation. And following the equation, we are just going to plot everything. That is, our um, specific heat of water, we have 4.18, and then 300 is our mass of water, which is that. And then 2.6 is a change in temperature which is this one, and we have all over 50, which is the mass of our metal, and our heat um, change, in, change in temperature of, a metal, of the metal is positive 79.6. Doing the math, it will give us 0.82. So we just put here 0.82. You will do the same process for the steel wire and the lead pellets. So these are the specific heat of the common materials and all these materials with a gray box you don't need to solve since we only did aluminum, steel, and lead. So to calculate for the percent error, it will just be... So following this equation, we have the calculated specific heat of the metal and what we calculated was 0.82 minus the known specific heat of the metal, which is this, 0.90 divided by the specific heat, the known specific heat of the metal, which is 0.90. And of course, you are going to multiply everything by 100. And this will give us 8.89%. 
So there is 8.89% error from our experimental value compared to the known value, which is just acceptable. In some cases, the measurement may be so difficult that a 10% error or even higher may be acceptable. But in other cases, a 1% error may be too high. But most school and introductory university instructors will accept 5% error. But in this case, since this is all virtual lab and we didn't really do it hands-on, 8.89 is still acceptable. And then after completing the percent error for steel and lead you're going to answer all of these questions so for your graph if you remember we have two hypotheses with these variables so we are going to create two graphs as well so here we are going to do graph a this will be based on um, the mass of the substance versus the amount of heat absorbed We already have a lesson on how to create a graph, but if you have questions, join us in our live lesson and uh, maybe another video um, on how to graph this kind of data. So if you think a graph is appropriate for this one, go ahead and do two graphs for your hypothesis A and B. If So just give a general trend for the effect of the mass of the substance to the amount of heat absorbed and the type of the substance to the amount of heat absorbed. Just a general statement. What would be the trend or what summary can you give? And then answer the questions to complete this lab. Okay, so that's it. If this tutorial has been helpful for you, give this a thumbs up and again, subscribe to this channel so I can support you better. Thank you so much guys and have a good day. God bless you all. Bye-bye.